Hello, my name is Christoph de May, and I'm a researcher and lecturer at Medulla University of Vienna in Austria. And today I'm going to be talking about disabilities and social inclusive participation in tourism. Now, disabilities have been studied in tourism research for many decades now. However, in my short presentation, I will try to look into this topic from a slightly different perspective, namely the perspective of social inclusive participation. And the presentation is mostly based on literature review, as well as some early findings from my own research. And I'll also refer to some emerging tourism products, um, which are offered predominantly by social enterprises and that put social inclusion at the core of their activities. So I'll first start with an introduction where I'll try to explain why inclusion is important and how does it relate to sustainability. Um, then I will try to discuss um, the concept of social inclusion, social inclusive participation. And this will lead to an overview of social inclusive participation in tourism and some products which are based on the reverse integrated approach. And I will explain a bit later what that, what that means. And I will um, give an illustration of reverse integrated products. And finally, I will give, try to give, conclude the presentation with some implications for future um, tourism research and tourism development. Inclusion and equity are indispensable requirements for sustainable development. Now, this is not my quote. It's a quote from Helen Clark. Um, she's a former prime minister of New Zealand and the current administrator of the United Nations Development Program. And the fact that sustainability, equity, and inclusion are used in the same sentence is not by accident. Because as we know, sustainable development assumes inter and intergenerational equity. By intergenerational equity, we mean that we should not compromise the abilities of future generations to meet uh, their own needs. But by intergenerational equ equity, we mean that at present, all the people on earth should have the same basic um, rights, basic, need, basic rights, and should be treated equally. So when sustainable tourist development, the, the term sustainable tourist development was coined and it received increased attention from tourism scholars, of course, equity was also discussed, um, particularly in, in, con in the context of fair um, distribution of uh, benefits from tourist development, fair employment and payment in the tourism industry, fair use of tourism resources by locals and visitors, However, there's also another aspect to uh, equity in tourism, and that is the equity in uh, receiving tourism experiences, regardless of the physical abilities. Now, many people think that people with disabilities um, just by default cannot have the same tourism experiences because they have some physical limitations. However, there are also other approaches on, on disability, and the so-called uh, social model of disability stipulates, for example, that disability is a social contract, uh, construct that it is the social, cultural, and physical environments created by the society are the ones which cause, cause social exclusion. And that means that the society can actually do much more uh, to promote inclusion. And the reason why we talk about inclusion, and, and we have to talk about it, is because certain groups of people, and people with disabilities being one of them, um, have been excluded from society for, for many, many years. And, um, in order to promote sustainability, we have to promote equity. And in order to promote equity, we have to talk about inclusion. So uh, I think ma many of you have seen this illustration before or any of the versions of this, on this illustration, but I think it very well illustrates why we talk about equity and not just equality. Well, the reason why is because um, very, um, very often, depending, uh, because of the varying uh, basic needs of the people, um, only offering equal conditions for everyone is not sufficient. In fact, as it can be seen from the picture, um, providing equal conditions very, very, very often can also lead to even stronger exclusion. But what is social inclusion? So there is no agreed definition on this term. Um, in fact, it is um, usually referred to as an opposite of social exclusion, and it is also used in various contexts, um, uh, gender, chronic diseases, uh, sexual orientation, race, income status. Um, in this presentation, I will mostly speak about social inclusion of people with disabilities. But it is, in general terms, can be described as the removal of barriers, emotional and sensorial, uh, to participation in various life domains, such as employment, leisure, um, as an equal citizen. And there are two major perspectives on social inclusion in research. One of them sees social inclusion as a state, as a condition that the people have at a moment of time. So it's more of a static approach. Um, and, 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 and researchers try to measure um, um, this, this condition of social inclusion. Um, could, this could be perceived as a, seen as um, 
a sociological or a psychological um, state. However, there's another, another perspective which sees social inclusion as a process or as a policy intervention tool, um, and this is more dynamic. And, in, and, and this, uh, from this angle, social inclusion is very often also um, called as participation or socially inclusive participation. So Schlein and colleagues, uh, back in 1999, suggested three approaches to social inclusive participation in recreation. And of course, tourism is one form of recreation. So these three form, the, the first one of these forms is integration of existing recreation programs, which means adapting an existing program of recreation uh, to the specific needs of people with disabilities. The second one um, is called reverse mainstreaming, also more currently known as reverse integration. And this is when um, this, this, this um, foresees the involvement of people without disabilities in activities that has been originally designed for people with, with disabilities. One example is wheelchair sports. So there are, certain, there are many uh, able-bodied people who actually participate in wheelchair handball or, or wheelchair basketball. And finally, the third approach is zero exclusion, which means actually um, activities open to equal participation regardless of the physical abilities of the people. And according to these authors, um, zero exclusion is the only true way of actually uh, promoting equal status of the participants in recreational programs. Um, on the other end, um, integration of, um, uh, with adaptation only makes slight changes, uh, it provides more access, and it doesn't actually foresee any changes in the core product. So what I did next is actually looked into tourism literature to see how social inclusive participation or which forms of tourism, uh, social inclusive participation can be found in tourism. So what I did first is I actually looked at the definition of accessible tourism and Darcy and Buhalis give the following definition. Accessible tourism is a form of tourism that enables people with access requirements to function independently and with equity and dignity through the delivery of universally designed tourism products, services and environments. And we see here the reference to universal design products. Um, universal design implies the design of products that can be used by people regardless of their abilities. And this very much reflects the zero exclusion approach by Schlein and colleagues. But this is a normative um, definition. What about the real situation in the tourism uh, system? So um, accommodation providers, for example, uh, have been involved in increasing accessibility of their facilities, majorly because of legislation and regulation. And a study by Darcy and Peg in 2011 have found that, perhaps, that particularly in Australia, um, hotel managers perceive accessibility, accessible accommodation as limited to accessible rooms. So in other words, having one or two rooms in a, in a hotel property which is accessible for people with disabilities. And they even refer to them as disabled rooms. Um, so as we see, there's no difference, to the, no, no changes to the core product, it's just providing some adaptation in order to, in order to, um, to um, result in, uh, in um, integration. This is very much the integration with adaptation approach, and mostly triggered by uh, legislation. And there are other, other cases as well. So Darcy and colleagues in 2010 reported a case of a hotel where, universally designed, uh, where prom premises were universally designed to provide accessible accommodation for all travelers. And that meant that not only the rooms, or in this case, cabins, were uh, created in an accessible way, but also other facilities such as travel paths, a performance stage, barbecue area, conference rooms, and spa facilities. And according to this case study, in fact, the hotel owners uh, experienced um, benefits in, in the occupancy rates um, based on these in, in the, in the, in changes in the, in the hotel facilities. And in fact, they started to, to target people with disabilities as, as a target group for their property. This can be problematic, though, to target people with disabilities um, as a specific target group. Why? Because many, um, the, the, the people, people with disabilities um, have probably much more in common with other people without disabilities than with people with disabilities. So it's very often problematic just to put them into one group. Um, and, and this is often uh, can be seen in, um, for example, um, museums. And there, are some, and there are some studies which show that um, that, 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 that report that people with uh, visual impairment um, also were, uh, very often are seen as being a very homogenous group. However, in fact, they have many very diverse interests which can be grouped into people without visual impairment much better than other people with visual impairment. And let's move to the museums then, or attractions. And, and museums are one example when providing access is not enough. So what, what museums very often do is they actually um, provide some special activities for people with sense sensorial impairments particularly, um, and for example, for people with visual impairment. However, 
very often people with visual impairment perceive them as being low standard, as lacking in terms of um, educational subject matter, sometimes being patronizing and needing more interpretation. So this reflects the inability of integration with adaptation um, in tourist attractions, particularly museums, uh, to provide an inclusive participation of people with disabilities. Or there are also other examples um, in the sector of attractions. Um, for example, there is this um, international franchise known as Dialogue in the Dark, uh, which is a social business offering um, short tours in complete darkness for sighted visitors which are guided by a blind person. And although it is mainly targeted at sighted people, um, and it, um, it emulates the experience of, of blind people in various environments, such as a park, city, boat, cruise, or bar, it also um, uh, promotes inclusion indirectly by changing the attitudes of people um, towards blindness and people with visual impairment. And there are also some tour operators um, that, or organizations that offer tours um, organized tours uh, for people with and without, visual, uh, without disabilities. Uh, some of these are Travel Eyes, Tour Descents, Jubilee Sailing Trust, Wilderness Inquir Inquiry. Um, and unlike sports, for example, where reverse integration is also um, applied, in this case, this is done in a commercial framework. And in fact, the companies or organizations that offer such tours, they, they differenti differentiate themselves from mainstream competitors by focusing on this inclusive um, dimension of the experiences and using it as their unique selling uh, proposition. Now, why reverse integration is actually very interesting is because it um, usually foresees the direct contact between people with and um, without disabilities. And why is it beneficial? It was beneficial in two ways. First of all, it has been shown that people with, with disabilities who have more contact with other people without disabilities, in fact, um, uh, that, that increases their, their, their quality of life. And that's, so that, that's the direct effect. And the indirect effect is that people without disabilities, when they, when they meet people with disabilities, they actually change their attitudes toward them. And that, and that uh, uh, removes the attitudinal barriers, which are very strong for social exclusion. And, and therefore, social enterprises, particularly, like, for example, like the ones which offer inclusive holiday experiences, holiday packages, in fact, um, also produce a social value um, by, by, decreasing, um, by decreasing exclusion and increasing inclusion. So I imagine many of you have not heard about um, inclusive tours before, and many of you also may be wondering what would motivate people without disabilities to participate in them. So I give an example of um, inclusive tours for people with and without visual impairment, and I actually have spoken to some people who participated. And although every story is unique, there are certain recurring um, themes and recurring motivations. So I group them together into, into, into four groups. Um, and one of them is, is the, just a pragmatic reason when people have friends or relatives who have visual impairment, and, and, and very often it's very difficult for people with, with visual impairment to travel in mainstream tours. On the other hand, companies that offer tours only for people with visual impairment do not really cater for the needs for the people without visual impairment. Uh, and therefore, inclusive holiday packages provide an opportunity to friends um, or relatives or families to travel together and experience the destination together. The second motivation is um, that by, by traveling an inclusive uh, holiday package, um, there is a guarantee that you won't be traveling alone. Um, in fact, most of these organizations design the tours in a way that, that people are paired up. Um, and that's, that's very interesting, especially for single travelers, because that means that they, they will definitely be um, having, uh, they definitely will not be traveling on their own. And then, because, because these inclusive tours are based on reverse integration, and they are designed, first of all, for people with visual impairment, uh, that means that um, uh, people who, um, that, 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 that the guided tours and, the, for example, the museum visits are a bit um, based on the use of other senses, not only visuals, and also benefits, um, benefits the people without uh, visual impairment because they can visit places and get experiences which they wouldn't be able to do otherwise in mainstream tours. And finally, just the interaction of people with and without visual impairment also changes the perception of the destination um, and changes the experience. So that's another motivation for people to travel. And as a conclusion, I just would like to say um, a few concluding remarks. So uh, first of all, inclusion of people with disabilities in tourism is a necessary condition for sustainable tourist development. As I said before, inclusion is, part for, is, is, a, is a necessary condition for equity, and equity is a base for sustainable development and sustainable tourist development as well. 
And then um, there are different forms of social inclusive participation. However, what, what can be said is that just adaptation for integration, so just adaptation because of some legislation, is usually not sufficient. It is important to design core products in a way that more people can enjoy them regardless of their physical abilities. And reverse integrated tourism products um, are an emerging type of tourism products offered primarily by social enterprises, which have both direct and indirect effects on social inclusion. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you found this presentation insightful, and I hope you got a better understanding of social inclusive participation in tourism.